what we wanted to do uh, is quickly explain uh, once again on, on what the SharePoint framework is all about. And just recap, uh, again, guiding people if you're not familiar and you're coming first time on a call. Uh, SharePoint framework is really the easiest way to build your enterprise solutions since Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Viva and SharePoint Online. And this is not going to go away. So we keep on investing in here. We Our team was actually engineering team was split by two and, and we're multiplying the resources, which is great. So uh, it's awesome, awesome to see the adoption. Uh, and one of the, as we can see, we've been introducing additional capabilities for Microsoft Viva Connection and Microsoft Teams more and more as part of this journey. Now, we will have a new component type here, starting with one SharePoint Framework 1.15, which is going to be then called Form Customizer. And Alex is going to do the live demo on that one today. Um, that's going to make this slide even more squeezed. So that's going to, I need to have some creative thinking on how do I adjust the slide. Just for smiles. Now, one of the key uh, asks what we've been having from a day one of SharePoint Framework is to allow a development of custom modern forms uh, with a customer edit experience. And as we start this journey, we're looking into doing uh, this in a full page transition. We already are having the getting the feedback that maybe a panel way, supporting panel way would be nicer as well. And we're looking into that as well. Um, it is a journey. We'll start with something and keep on evolving that from there. But what's going to happen, and you'll see that within the demo as well, is that you can associate a custom component which will take over the whole canvas and you can uh, basically render or do whatever you want within the form. So as we are clicking the new, as we are clicking the view item or an edit item, you control how to, what, is, what are the options which are being exposed uh, in the control level. As part of this release, uh, as part of the plan, uh, we are also introducing a new set of uh, CSAM API controls and properties. Initially, again, in CSAM, they're going to be in a, a graph API at some point, uh, but starting from the CSAM NUGET package 16.1.2, 22518, uh, 12,000, uh, which was released actually Tuesday this week uh, publicly. We have now six new properties uh, available in the content type. And these are the ones which we can use then to basically say for SharePoint that, oh, there's an item within this list, which is content type ID of this. And as that's getting rendered, you should be rendering that using my custom component. And then the component properties are there as an additional way of parameterizing the execution. So you can provide parameters to the component based on the instance, uh, how it's, where it's being associated. So one example of that one quickly would be, you would be basically saying for the same components, you would be identifying for text values or adjusting properties or configurations, how the component is behaving between the new form, display form and edit form. You do though actually get that in the context as well. So is the user watching that form in a which form type. But now let's not actually spend too much time on explaining this. Actually, let's see it live and Alex can do the live demo, which is a yep. bit more complex than the previous one, which was showed on this. Let me share my screen. Yeah, so for this demo, I have this uh, list, product list, uh, with a few uh, columns in there. And uh, what I want to show, I want to show two scenarios. First of all, how to debug your form customizer, and the second one, how it will work in your uh, production environment. So first of all, I already have this uh, solution uh, prepared in here. So if we compare what we had in previous uh, beta release and uh, current RC release, we changed the serve uh, the JSON configuration. Right now, in all the configurations, you don't see the content type ID uh, property in here. And this is because we kind of simplified how your uh, form customizer will be applied to the list uh, during the debugging session. So you don't need to go to the list, uh, check for the uh, default content type, check this ID and put it here in the server.json. Instead of that, if component type uh, ID, content type, sorry, ID is not defined in the in your uh, serve configuration. We'll just grab the default content type from the list and apply your form customizer to this default content type. So basically, the debugging process in uh, RC release is much easier than it was in beta release. 
So another thing that I uh, modified here in comparison to default uh, scaffolded project, I'm using dynamic form from uh, SPFX uh, controls React, PNP controls, and uh, this is kind of basic scenario that you can use for uh, new and uh, edit form. It's uh, kind of uh, the control itself grabs all the fields from the content type and creates a beautiful form for you and uh, the main thing here for the on submitted and on cancelled i'm providing the on close and on save from our uh, form customizer and these on save and uh, on close methods are here and you must uh, call this form closed or this form saved because these calls will kind of notify our core uh, spfx core to close your page and redirect you back to the list or the home page of the site. So now let me show you how to debug the solution. So it's pretty similar to, and I know it's probably a little bit small, but uh, basically what I'm doing, I'm just doing gulp surf and uh, let's wait probably for a moment or two or three. Here we go. Low debug scripts, everything as you usually do with any other uh, SharePoint framework solution. And here we are, basically based on the configuration we have in uh, serve.json file. Uh, I have page URL here that is for uh, my specific site. I have root folder, which is uh, my list. And uh, page type 8 means that uh, the default configuration will be for new form, the same like here. If you want to uh, debug edit form, you need to provide page type 6 and uh, ID of the specific item. If you want to debug display form, again, page type is changed to uh, 4 and you need to provide ID. Uh, let me go back. So. As you can see, the form is uh, rendered. You can do some tests from demo. Uh, select some color, whatever it is. Uh, click save. And because it's uh, debugging, not uh, uh, not tied to the list, you will be just redirected to the home page because we don't have kind of redirect URL in our parameters. But right now, if we go to this product list, I actually have uh, set the new form client side component ID and edit form client side component ID for this list. And this is how your form customizer will behave in real life scenarios. So if I click new in this list, you will see that we are redirected to the specific page, splistform.aspx. It's pretty similar to uh, behavior we had in classic SharePoint with the custom forms. And again, you have the same, basically the same form in here. If I select, and in that case, you're redirected back to the list itself because we have correctly provided all the parameters when you click on this new form. Same if I select some item, click edit, Again, because I have edit form client side component set to this form customizer, again, I have the same experience. But because I didn't set the display new form client side component ID, the behavior for display form is still the same. So if I click on this item, I will see the panel. So this is the flexibility you have. So basically, you can separately configure new form, configure edit form, and configure display form. And that's all I have, I believe. So, yep. Let's come back on the slides. I'll, I'll do a quick recap on, on what's going to be available in 1.15 and then the things where we need your feedback still. And I can actually close up the call. See, Patrick, we are right on time for now. I, I, am, I am amazed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm truly astounded and proud of us all. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time for three months that we're on time. <laughs> so on the list extensibility roadmap, as part of the, the 1.15 release candidate, again, we do support overriding the item level, new edit and view forms. Association is done in the content type level, not in the list level. Uh, but again, it, it's a matter of an opinion. Every single list has a content type behind of it. Uh, are you seeing that or not from a UX as a separate setting? Um, 
And then it, there was a question, good question from uh, uh, Jim already in the chat. So if you're using content type publishing or if you're using content types from root of the site collection and then you use those in a sub sites or in the lists, um, this information does get replicated uh, to so-called chipe content types. If you're not super deep in the SharePoint, that might make no sense whatsoever for you, but it's, it's, it's as any data within a content type level. We will have the API support for associated custom uh, rendering component at the com content type. So you can do this uh, either as part of the installation event as an element XML, or you can do that programmatically as you're provisioning things. Now, if you're using a tenant wide deployment option, then you cannot associate element XML on that solution. So there's a bit of a thinking on how do you associate uh, that content type level extensibility in and and we already have a tutorial on how to get started with the initial documentation initial process uh, it's not super complicated actually but we're working on a, a bit more complicated a bit more throughout sample and tutorial on explaining all of the saving and the creation of new items and all of that as part of this journey now what's in the roadmap or in the plans and this is basically in the plans without any ETA uh, is to support showing custom components in the list context panel uh, so basically, uh, we talked about that one internally. For now, we need to transition to a new page, uh, potentially in the future, maybe depending on your input, depending on how you are giving us the input, is this important or not, uh, then we can actually have that discussion internally with the list and library team to enable the panel level extensibility. But again, we need to get your input on that. Uh, we will also support overriding of list default views, potentially maybe in the future. Uh, so basically, when you go to the list right now, there's no way for fully overriding that full list of all items. That overriding does not exist. Uh, we talked about it internally. Uh, right now, there are no ETA, no explicit plan on that, but it's technically in the roadmap waiting for prioritization and let's see how, how that will actually work. And then tenant wide from deployment list support for the list extensibility components. We talked about that one, not yet at least in the in the uh, timeline and that's part of the 1.15. But we kind of acknowledge the requirement that it would be nice to have a way of associating um, for example, these components to all document libraries across the tenant automatically from a single location. So having that kind of a tenant level control, but the tenant wide deployment extension list is actually providing. But again, not yet in the 1.15. So uh, the future versions uh, will have then additional capabilities based on your feedback, based on your input. And, and let's say the last bullet point on the slide. Please, please, please let us know what works, what doesn't work, uh, what do you need, uh, because that is super critical for us uh, on adding additional capabilities within the SharePoint framework. Now, that's pretty much it. We do have four minutes. I can answer a few questions in the chat. There was a question related on governmental tenants. There should not be any delay on getting this in governmental tenants. Uh, again, the, the, this is just typical low-level SharePoint framework component. Uh, so it is rolling out as a normal feature. And there should not be, if a SharePoint framework is uh, supported there, it should get this one there in a normal rolling out way. So whenever we are rolling it out and enabling that to the tenant, I guess there's a small delay, a bit longer delay with governmental tenants and GCC and GCC high on when the features are enabled. Are the settings included in list designs? That's a really, really good question. That's a really good question. We need to follow up on that. Uh, just making sure that we're actually taking that into account in the list design and list templates. So basically, as you're provisioning your site template or, or design on top of the existing site, you would be able to enable these components to be available in the libraries. Now, there is a bit of a catch there. Um, uh, so as the association of the component ID is done in the content type level, it's not 0x0101 for item because item has a unique item content type as a unique ID in every single list where it's being associated. So there, there is this a bit of a catch uh, related on association and, and we, we still need to do some level of a planning how we can control this more efficiently. Because again, the, same, the document content type used in a different document libraries throughout the tenant will have actually separate content type ID based on the instance of the library within a tenant. Um, so that's why the runtime resolution works, uh, but we still haven't figured out how do we do this tenant wide. Something which we will follow up for sure. A good question from Chris.
Oh, Jim Duncan has one more question. Do, 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 do. So we won't be able to use this in privacy over channel since we don't seem to be able to use custom content types. In, uh, you, you don't have to be a custom content type. So you can associate as a custom uh, these components to any content type within the tenor. Just to be clear on that, doesn't have to be a custom content type. Good, I guess that's it. Thank you.